Next, we're going to talk about the cycling envelope. I'm a particular fan of the cycling envelope because it is a uh, functionality that was uh, started and undoubtedly inspired by Don Buchla's envelopes, with which I am somewhat familiar. Um, but it's a really great modulation design that is super applicable and super fun and super interesting. And this is a very functional application of it as well. So we're gonna start out. Okay, so the cycling envelope doesn't do anything unless you assign it a task in your matrix. So right now, it's not set to do anything. So we will set it to do something. And we go up here to the matrix, and I'm gonna set it to the pitch. Now certainly the pitch is not gonna be the place that you're gonna feel super excited about all the cool sounds that I make with the pitch. But the pitch will give you a good indication of what is actually happening with the wave shapes and LFO functions you're generating with this cycling envelope. So we're not gonna be cool, we're gonna be educational. Okay, I'm sorry. So we'll click on that and we'll give it a 100% uh, modulation. So let's hear what we got going on. So now the pitch is altered for the length of the envelope. As you can see, the cycling envelope is set to envelope, so it's acting just like this envelope down below, except for it has a different, slightly different uh, structure. Let's explore that structure. Uh, one of the things I love about this is when you have an envelope that you can apply anywhere, you can make really interesting attack transients, which is what's happening in the sound we're ha that we have right here. If you want to, it's kind of comical right now, but if we tighten that up, we can put a little bit of punchiness right at the beginning of this sound uh, just by modulating the pitch with this envelope. So that acts like, you know, so like in the acoustic world, like some sort of strike. But uh, if you put that in front of a bass, you're going to get super, super punchy basses, which is really cool. Um, because our other envelope is, you know, it has duty with the amp and the filter, you have the ability to apply this envelope to do things like creating attack transients like this or modulation sources, et cetera, which we're going to get to. Let's listen to what this actually does. <laughs> If you look, it says it actually tells you the length of the fall time. Right now, we're looking at ten seconds. So you get this little information. These screens are so helpful. You actually you don't have to guess or just assume. Well, it's about this long. You can actually see how long it's going to be. And we also get to see exactly the shape we're making. Okay, so that acts as you might expect. Uh, we also have sustain, which sets the level that it holds at until you let go of the key. So, you know, this is just another envelope for you to add if you want to have it in this envelope setting. And we do have a mount. So a mount is really cool. The amount of the cycling envelope gauges uh, how much, to what degree the uh, setting of a mount on the matrix is given. As you'll remember, we have this set to 100. So we can turn that off. So the cycling, cycling envelope does nothing, and then we can decide how much of that 100 is applied to the cycling envelope itself. And of course, you can set this to 50 or something. You can basically scale between these two settings exactly what you want. So if we had it back at that uh, punchy setting I had it at, can actually set the frequency of the punch, which is pretty cool. Um, so the amount allows you to dial in really specific settings and then change the amount to suit your tastes 
in performance or whatever, which is really, really helpful. So basically, in the envelope setting, this is a really great um, attack decay envelope you can apply to whatever you need it to change. Now, the real fun happens when we set it into run, and this is where it becomes more of a Buchla-esque setting because this is the way that Buchla envelopes often operate. Um, now, at the end of its fall, it'll trigger itself. It sends out a trigger that then causes itself to repeat. So then it loops. Now, I know that's going to be confusing because we actually have a setting called loop, but they're using loop in a different way there. When we have this uh, cycling envelope set to run, it is cycling, which means it is looping over and over again. which sounds shockingly like an LFO, which is what you have here. So basically, you have two LFOs in the synthesizer should you choose to use the cycling envelope as an LFO. And of course, as you decrease the rise and fall, the attack and decay, you'll get shorter times, and that means it will repeat faster. So you can set the frequency of the LFO effect by changing the setting of the rise and the fall. And yes, it goes into the audio range, which can create some interesting effects. Since we are modulating, frequency modulating the pitch using the cycling envelope, and we have a, an envelope that is repeating fast enough, we're actually getting audio range modulation, which in this setting, as we currently have it, is adding kind of a nice buzz. So if you've got some sort of uh, two clean digital sounds that you like to mess up a little bit, this is a way you can do it. Now I'm changing the amount, which is actually changing the pitch, which is interesting. And of course, you could you know retune the oscillator so that it's uh, where you need it to be. Here you can hear the audio range modulation. And since it's digital, you are getting some creepy, weird, cool digital effects. some kind of ring modulator sort of sounds you can get there. Another thing about this that is so cool though, as you'll notice in the screen, uh, the wave shape that we're using is this kind of triangle that is basically the rise and the fall, the attack and the decay. You can see that these slopes are linear and not um, anything other than linear. However, we do have the ability to change that and make them either logarithmic or exponential, depending on the direction you go. Uh, you'll notice it says shape and shape in blue on both of these settings. So uh, that's telling you, the blue is telling you that you need to press the shift over here to get that functionality. So when we do this, and it will, sh uh, when we do this, you're actually going to change the shape of the rise portion or the fall portion of the envelope. So let's have a look at this. Let's, um, let's do something. Okay, so then I'm gonna hold the note with my thumb, press shift, and then I get to, you'll see the attack is bending either logarithmic or exponential. So you get to actually change the shape of 
uh, that modulation. And so you can get different waveforms as an LFO. <laughs> And, uh, you know, obviously with that, there was kind of a, uh, a shuffle feel to it, which, yeah, you can actually uh, sort of shape it to suit your purposes. And, of course, it's a different waveform. So when you get into the audio range modulation, you're actually generating a different waveform. <laughs> I'm getting the held note that is the, the sustain section. I'm changing that held note by changing the amount, which just is changing the voltage. And therefore, the voltage plateau happens at a different voltage, which causes the pitch to be at a different frequency. <laughs> If you memorize the percentages at which you find the pitches you want, you could actually play this, like play different notes by looking at the percentages, which would be interesting, but a lot more work than I think most people would be <laughs> willing to go to. Anyway, we have one more setting on here, and that is the loop. And if I was a good person, I would have uh, set up a sequence for this. But basically what loop is, it's the same as run, but uh, like a... Um, like setting the reset of your LFO, loop starts the loop when it gets a trigger from a key event or a sequencer or arpeggiator event or an external uh, clock event. So basically, if you want the loop to be to occur at a specific time and start at a specific time, the loop setting will do that. <laughs> But if you're just hitting it with a key, it's going to sound like, um, it sounds like the run. So at first you're like, what is the difference between these? But it's that this one, when it's set to loop, it restarts every time you press a key or it gets a trigger from some other sort of automation. So if I have it on run, that's not what it'll sound like. So... Yeah, so it's very functional if you're doing programming and you're doing um, something sequenced and you need this effect to begin and end at specific points. Uh, loop is your friend. So when I am programming, I typically go to the cycling envelope first if I'm interested in modulating one of the oscillator aspects so that the envelope, which is hardwired typically to the filter and well, hardwired to the amp and direct, often directed to the filter, this envelope can be doing things with the filter and the amp and the cycling envelope can be doing interesting things with your oscillator modulation. It's a lot of fun and you can do, you know, obviously you can use it as an envelope or you can use it as an LFO, which makes it super versatile. Then uh, when you get into, which I think we did in, the matrix video, you can start to apply modulation sources to these settings as destinations and change your envelope in real time through modulation to get a variety of, well, an infinite variety of effects. I would demonstrate, but I mean, there's so many different ways it can happen. I think I did it in the last video, but yeah, certainly just going straight in and assigning um, rise, fall, hold, or sustain, hold and sustain, or amount uh, in the the assigning settings. You can modulate them in any way that you see fit, which is really really cool. Including assigning it to modulate itself, which <laughs> causes some pretty crazy mayhem. Anyway, so that is basically the cycling envelope on the Arturio Microfreak. <laughs>